okay so this is uh, lecture 15 okay so the last thing we saw in the previous lecture was what what is the last thing we saw Nyquist criteria, right? So the Nyquist criteria is what we saw. Okay. So what does it say? If you want to put it very briefly, it says if you are, if you want the, if you want a band limited signal G of T and all its shifts by capital T to be orthonormal right that's the conditions right g of t is what band limited to what did i take did i take w by 2 w by 2 okay so minus w by 2 to w by 2 so suppose you have g of f being band limited like this right g of t is band limited okay so it's And you want what? You want g of t minus kt for k not equal to 0, k, k an integer which is non-zero to be, well, I don't have to say anything about k. Okay, so, I simply say k an integer should be orthonormal. Okay, the orthonormality is not a big deal. Orthogonality is the major thing, right? The shifts have to be orthogonal with, each, with respect to each other. Once they are orthogonal, if you normalize one, everything gets normalized. So it's not a big deal. There's no problem with that. They have to be orthonormal. And Nyquist criteria gives you a condition for this. What's what does that condition work out to? Okay, so you think of the C of f, which is mod g of f squared. Then what should the C of f satisfy? Okay, summation. 1 by t summation m equals minus infinity to infinity c of f minus m by t should be 1. Okay, so that was the that's the Nyquist criteria. Brief and the proof is quite simple and elementary. There's nothing very big there, but there's some subtle points. The way we convert from discrete time to continuous time and how we use the relationship between the two Fourier transforms. Okay, the discrete time Fourier transform and the continuous time Fourier transform for the continuous time signal. Okay, the relationship is very crucial there. Okay, so these are the various things at play. W comes into the picture through the bandwidth, and T enters the picture through the shifts. Okay, so from here we can quickly draw several useful conclusions. First conclusion you can draw is so usually you want to think of W as fixed. Okay, W is some bandwidth that is fixed. How do you fix W? Sorry? One of the constraints. No, from, from in a practical situation, from the channel, how do you fix W? Yeah, so you, you find the range of bandwidth for which H is your, your impulse response H of F. Well, your channel response H of F is flat, right? You wanted an ideal channel response. As in magnitude response should be flat and phase should be linear. You wanted both of that for in your channel response. So, if you're given a certain bandwidth to work with, you sound your channel, figure out what the channel's frequency response is and then identify that region where it's going to be flat. From there, you fix your W. Okay, so in practice, in a real system, when you're designing things, that's how you fix W, right? So, W is fixed. And then the next choice is in your signaling scheme, you remember the transmit scheme that I had, right? I convert bits into symbols and then I think of my symbols as an impulse train separated by the symbol time t, okay? The t is the next choice. So this Nyquist criteria is going to tell you how to choose t and how to choose my transmit filter response g of t, okay? So that's, that's the picture I have in mind. So this picture is clear to you, right? So how that works. Okay, the transmit transmitter, I think it must be in my previous, uh, in last last week's lecture, I don't want to go back to it. So, the transmitter is has that uh, set up. So, that's what we are trying to find. So, so once you fix W, how, how can you choose capital T and how can you choose G of T? Sorry? 
yeah so that's the first condition that i probably wrote down uh, last class the first condition that you can quickly see is since g of t is okay so let me ask once again let me see if this is if this is this is clear with people so why did i want g of t to be band limited between minus w by 2 and w okay so from a more uh, model point of view so wh what did what did it mean once g of t was band limited what could i do exactly so the correlation and all that comes through so once it's band limited after it goes through h of t what happens you get the same thing okay so which means on the receiver side i can i know what my orthonormal basis is and i can correlate very easily with the same thing okay so that's the reason why i want g of t to be band limited within this okay so it's very important to understand that okay within a flat range of h of f okay all right so so the first conclusion you can draw is this 1 by t okay so 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 what is this nyquist criteria telling you so you have w by 2 and suppose i pick my so suppose this is w okay and then if i pick my 1 by t here okay i have to shift g of f to 1 by t and then it will die down when will it die down it will die down before the w by 2 okay so which means you will definitely have a part where it is zero where it cannot be one okay so 1 by t cannot be to the right of w okay so the best you can do is if 1 by t equals w and in general you get a simple bound which says 1 by t less than or equal to w for nyquist criteria to be satisfied okay so so it's also called this one so so this this one by t equals w is called the nyquist rate nyquist symbol rate okay so so if your bandwidth is so base band bandwidth plus w by 2 implies w is the nyquist symbol rate if you go above this nyquist symbol rate what can you not guarantee Okay, so so finally, what does it mean in terms of the receiver? It will have to deal with. Uh, there was a term that I used. There was an acronym. I use. Okay, so it's a very popular acronym with the defense forces. So you should also know it. Okay, so inter-symbol interference can be completely avoided if you can can be completely avoided only if you choose to signal at less than or equal to the Nyquist rate. Okay, so this is the Nyquist rate. and uh, that's the main deal okay so you you can get rid of inter symbol interference your s of k right will be received as s of k plus noise s of k minus 1 or s of k plus 1 will have no part to play when you receive s of k okay so that's the it's the main thing, okay so i say can be eliminated in this case all right so so the next thing we are going to see okay any questions on this Did anybody go back and think about this and have some questions in the derivation how it worked out okay so here are the three cases that we'll consider okay so all of them are basically inspired by the nyquist criteria if 1 by t is greater than w you can quickly conclude isi free communication is not possible okay so that's fine so what if 1 by t equals w or you decide to signal at the maximum possible rate that is permitted okay so you only have one choice for c of f okay do you see that because look at, look at what happens if 1 by t equals w my c of f if i if i try to draw, draw c of f now okay is going to be strictly band limited between minus w by 2 and w by 2 and then my 1 by t equals w okay so the only way i can make c of f after shifting a constant is to have c of f equals the rect what will be the level of c of f 
what will be the height? Okay, I said it's not very relevant, but to be very rigorous, yeah, it will be t. Okay, just write t. Okay, because I'm doing a one by t, I don't want it to be equal to one, so just to be very perfect. Okay, so that's the only choice. Okay, so what can I choose g of f to be? If I choose this is cf, what is the possible choice for gf? Remember, c of f is mod square, right? So the magnitude at least you can definitely pick. The magnitude will be, well, if you want to be very rigorous about it, it will be root t, okay? Okay, but the phase is, is ambiguous. So you can, for instance, choose zero phase and be happy about it. That's one thing you can do. All right, so what's the... So what will be g of t or, or c of t for that matter? Okay. So my c of f in the case when 1 by t equals w becomes uh, t times rect minus w by 2 w by 2 f. Right. So if you do a Fourier transform here, c of t will become what? Yeah, what sink? Okay, so you can show it will become simply sink t by t in my notation. So what was sink t by t in my notation? Sin pi t by t by pi t by t. Okay, so so g of f is only slightly different. Instead of t, you had root t. So because of that, there'll be a small modification. You will get g of t working out to be one by root t sink t by t okay okay so the extra factor comes about because of so what's t t is 1 by w okay so i don't have it here remember t is 1 by w signaling at the hmm You're saying there is some other g of f? I'm sorry? I have not talked about any problem for 1 by t equals w, I said. I'm sorry, 1 by t? I'm sorry? No, I didn't understand the question. Please repeat the question. Okay, so what is so okay? What am I trying to do here? Well, let me let me answer. Let's say something, and then we'll see if it answers your question or not. I'm trying to find a c of f or a g of t which will satisfy the Nyquist criteria when one by t equals w. So what does it mean once my g of t satisfies the Nyquist criteria? There is no ISA. What's the doubt about it? Right? For one by t equals w, I'm trying to find a g of t which satisfies the Nyquist criteria, which means as long as my channel is ideal and flat. There is no ISA. What was your question? Is that the question or you are saying there is some, there might be some problem with picking this as a sync function but th that will come to later. Those are not what I am talking about. I am just trying to find g of t which will satisfy Nyquist criteria. So for 1 by t equals w, this is pretty much unique. Okay, so this is a unique answer. You can't get any other answer. Right? So I think you started off by saying any other g of f with the discontinuity at w by 2. No, no, no. There's no other g of f. It has to be flat. It has to have a certain value. Okay, that's the only g of f that will satisfy the Nyquist criteria. Okay. Well, of course, phase is ambiguous, but phase is not a big deal. Okay. Any other question? Okay. I'm just trying to find. So g of t which will satisfy the Nyquist criteria. Basically g of t and g of t minus kt will be what? Orthonorm. That will be an orthonormal set. So if you do g of t and g of t minus t, if you do multiply the two of them and integrate from minus infinity to infinity, what will you get? Get 0. Do you want something? Okay. Thought you wanted to talk to him. Alright. So, so let's try to uh, so the couple of couple of things I want to point out. If you try to plot c of t, 
okay so so why is c of t important first of all so why am i so bothered about c of t why can't i just be happy with g of t okay so that's the first question you should ask why is where is where is where does c of t show up in my picture okay so maybe i should draw the picture so once i have this system how will i signal okay so i have a sequence of bits b okay what is this b0 to bl minus 1 okay i think this picture for some reason people seem to have forgotten okay so i have a first i map according to some alphabet and that size is 2 power n okay i get my sk okay so zero k is between 0 and l minus 1 and then what do i do i filter with g of t to get the transmitted signal which is what summation sk g of t minus kt k equals 0 to l minus 1 then i send it through a channel with response h of t such that what happens it's flat between minus w by 2 and w by 2 okay and suppose i chose g of t like this and capital t to be 1 by w okay okay so well so here you can imagine this is one such choice i can make okay then i add then noise gets added to it it's not that i add noise noise will get anyway added to it okay and then what can you do now here you can correlate with g of t and its shifted versions okay so that's one way of doing it or equivalently you can achieve that correlation by filtering with what g star, g star of minus t which is the matched filter corresponding to g of t and then what should you do exactly so when you filter before sampling what will you have here yeah so x b of t con yeah g of t converted with g star of minus t so those will be c of t sampled right so so basically you will be sampling c of t here okay so one can imagine this being c of t and its delayed versions multiplied by s of k okay so you pretty much what you have here will be what uh, s of k filtered with c of t okay do you see that when you when you correlate you convolving right so it will be c of t and c of t's shifted versions so then you sample okay so that's what you get sample every t what will you get once you sample every t okay since this g of t satisfies the nyquist criteria s of k plus n of k okay and what is this s of k s of k will be some complex number a k b k and what will this n of k be n k1 n k2 what will this be i id normal all that is true okay zero mean variance and not by okay so so in spite of the channel being uh low pass right minus w by 2 to w by 2 and in spite of me signaling at 1 by w which is much much fast faster than faster than what i had before what did we have in the previous systems if my channel was flat between minus w by 2 and w by 2 what will i choose my t to be much much smaller than 1 by w i want to go anywhere near 1 by w i chose t to be much much smaller than 1 by w and then what did i do what did i pick g of t to be yeah just constant between 0 and t okay that was enough when say once i if i signaled very very slowly now i'm i want to push my signaling rate to as high a rate as possible and through the nyquist criteria i find that the highest rate that i could ever do avoiding isi totally is 1 by w and but then what what am i paying with for what is the change i have to do i can't use my simple g of t right i have to use the sync as my g of t and then i have to filter with g star of minus t at the receiver once i do that i still have what no isi simply it's as good as before right and then if you look from here to here what happens right if you forget about what's happening on the right hand side and only view this this is exactly identical to the previous case that i had just qam with noise being added 
absolutely no change from what I had before. Except that my signaling rate now has gone up to 1 by W, which is the highest possible rate I can have without ISI. Okay, and everything else remains the same except that your transmit filters become a little bit more complex, your receive filter, the correlator has become a little bit more complex. Previously, what correlator did I have? Uh, just integrate and dump. It just became a very simple correlator. Now I have to do something more fancy, but I have the exact same thing. Okay, so as, as far as this is concerned. So what can you do here? Just run a detector. Okay, for each K you can run it independently. Okay, you don't have to worry about S of K minus 1 when you are detecting S of K. Because you know all of those things are independent. You can do minimum distance, MAP, etc. And then finally produce a B hat. Okay, so this is the picture I am talking about. Okay, the Nyquist criteria tells you something meaningful in such a system. Okay, it tells you if g of t and g of and it shifts by capital T are orthonormal, then if g of t occupies a certain bandwidth and if your channel is flat in that bandwidth, you can achieve ISI free communication with such a setup. Okay, you filter the transmit filter g of t and you filter in the receive side with g star of minus t and sample every t you will pretty much get rid of ISI and you can run your same detector as before and you can signal much faster than what we did. Okay, So, this is the this is a, this is a significant next step that we have done. Okay, But this, this is, uh, okay, first of all, is there any question, something that is disturbing you, anything you, I said which is not quite clear, you are not convinced about, you think it cannot be true just cannot happily increase your symbol rate without paying for it. Everything is okay? It's fine? Okay, so let me ask another question now. What is this n of k? Can I define n of k to be a complex Gaussian process, white Gaussian process? Right? It is a white Gaussian process. Right? What will be the uh, autocorrelation function? for the real component of n of k. We n not by 2 times delta, right? So you see all that? So all those things are correlations. I mean, you can go back to random process and convince yourself this n of k is a white Gaussian process. Okay, so that is very crucial. Okay. What else? What other comment can I make? Okay, so this is my HFF. Okay. So the next thing to is Co but, but then you will have to do correlation. You cannot do filtering. See, when I put a box and write a function of time inside, what I mean, mean is what? I am saying you are filtering by that. That is an impulse response for the filter. If I put g of t and g of t minus k t, t 3 minus t etc., what am I saying that I should do? You should correlate. Okay, so that is something else. That is correlation with g of t, g of t minus t. It is this. But these two are the same. Okay? But there is a problem with this. What is the problem? What are the various problems that you can think of? If you if you try to implement such a thing, what is the first problem you can think of? Sorry? Causality. Causality of G of T. Yeah, are you disturbed by it? Yeah, you have to be, right? G of T is going off on both sides. And G of T, in fact, decays very, very slowly. How does it decay? 1 by T. Okay, in fact, even C of T decays as 1 by T. Okay? It's a very very slow decay. Okay, so there are there are several uh, confusions here with C of T decaying very slowly. First thing is, since it's cost, so okay. So how do you? Okay, first let's address the causality problem. How will you get over the causality problem? Yeah, you just delay the G of T. Okay, so instead of G of T, I'm going to put G of T minus T naught. Since everything is LTI, everything will get delayed. Okay, and somehow I have to estimate that delay or I should know that delay at the receiver and compensate for it. I can do that. Okay, so the first problem that people said G of T is non-causal. Okay, so this is the first issue. So I say issues. G of T is non-causal. It can be overcome by delay. Okay. Right? So that's one thing that you can somehow get over without too much of a problem. Did you have any other question? Yeah, that also you can delay now. 
the thing so you take care of the total delay from g of t to g star of minus t so you have to delay everything so even g star of minus t so he's saying he's pointing out g star of minus t well g star of minus t is g of minus t and that's also non causal how will you get over it you once again delay you know i mean so basically the filter that you will be implementing will be something like this okay so this is the filter that you will be implementing this is a very implementable thing definitely in digital you can happily sample this and implement this is no problem okay so that's the delay okay so even this can be delay we can solve this problem okay so you simply delay it and then you have to adjust for the delay where will you adjust where should you adjust for all these delays at the receiver which point will have to take care of all these delays the sampling instant okay so sampling instant should be suitably delayed and you should pick the right time to sample so that it corresponds to the undelayed version okay the same same point okay so that might require some some careful study okay so you should know what the delay is and adjust for it and sample at the suitable time okay if you're doing the lab you'll see this will be one of the first things you'll have to face okay in the real signal you do if you're doing the advanced communication lab I think dd students are doing it you'll see this, this will be one of the first things you'll have to decide when you actually get a received signal it will be definitely delayed okay and then you have to figure out where to sample okay so that's the first issue there's a second issue which i will address a little bit later also more formally but the thing is uh, if you pick g of t as sync sync dk's okay so so all these things are t equals 1 by w g of t is a sync okay g of t dk's as 1 by t okay so if you sample 1 by t at uh, at some interval say capital t capital 2t so on and then add up all the samples okay 1 by capital t but plus 1 by 2t plus 1 by 3t is that a convergent series no it doesn't converge it can be arbitrarily large okay it will keep on increasing okay so so why will that cause any problem in my receiver is that something i should be worried about okay so it it can get large so this can get large so so what will happen is suppose my sampling period t is not exact it's off off by say some point point 1 millisecond or something okay then what's happening all my previous sinks right they'll all be having now non zero components okay right and all of them will add as 1 by t only so i can get larger numbers okay okay but if i if i to dk faster than this then it won't be a problem okay so because of this there seems to be a sensitivity to to uh, uh, okay it's this is very so receiver becomes sensitive to okay so let me write it that way receiver becomes very sensitive to errors in t okay if you make a small error in t you can suddenly be off by a lot Okay, so let me draw one more picture to illustrate what is going on here. So you may not uh, appreciate the sync being ortho orthonormal. Okay, so I'll let me draw a few pictures, then convince you about how how this is working out in such a precise fashion and uh, without any uh, without without more uh, with some some more pictures. Okay, so the first picture I'm going to draw is draw a sync and a shifted sync. Okay, and then ask you to convince yourself that indeed if you multiply the two of them and integrate, you'll get zero. Okay, so it's not so easy to quickly see from the picture. Okay, so what, how does the sync look? Okay, so suppose I take sync. Okay, so these are all some illustrations just to expand on this zero ISI, which somehow happened by magic. Okay, so the first thing is orthonormality for the sync. Okay, so let's draw a picture. Let's see how it works out. Okay, suppose I draw sync. t by t okay what is this sin pi t by t divided by pi t by t so all of you should know how to plot this okay so what's the value at 0 1 okay and then it decays and it has zero crossings at t 2t 3t so on okay and minus t minus 2t 
minus 3t so on am i right okay right and then it's kind of like a sine wave except that it gets multiplied by 1 by t so 1 by t goes off like this and then so you should it should also happen here okay so kind of works out okay so now what happens if i do shift it to the right by capital t okay so this whole thing shifts and you can then i can draw this guy here okay okay so i'm drawing it slightly poorly so hopefully you can and visualize how this works out okay if somebody were to draw these two pictures and say these two signals are ortho orthogonal it's not it's not so clear right so i don't know maybe you believe it if i tell you but it's not so clear i'm sorry uh no actually these two signals are orthogonal what do i mean by orthogonal integral sin t by t sin t minus t by t right if you do this what will you get you will get zero okay, so this is true that's what i mean by orthogonal not that at each point they have to multiply and give you zero that won't happen so this is what i mean by orthogonal okay so but you are right about the zero crossings i'll come to it it's a little bit sensitive to that also okay so that's a it's a surprising property it requires some illustration okay so that's fine now what are we doing when we suppose do suppose we do bpsk with this as my g of t okay suppose in my communication system i'm choosing to do bpsk for the mapper so I either multiply the sync with plus 1 or minus 1 okay right is that clear okay so notice what's happening suppose i multiply this sync with plus 1 okay or say some s of 1 or s of 0 okay and then i multiply this sync with s of 1 and then the next shifted sync if i can draw it with a maybe i'll draw it with a different color how do i change color no it's not color how should i change color do you, anyone know okay maybe i'll do this medium point it seems to be red okay so if i look at this guy okay i'm drawing it very badly but okay let's do it let's do a better picture okay okay so if you do this sync now okay so there's a curious phenomena that's happening what is happening can someone say make some observations okay suppose i multiply this with s of 2 and so on and then add up all of them okay so what am i doing when i when i do my modulation i'm saying s of k g of t minus kt okay just for concreteness assume we are just doing 0 to 2 okay 0 1 2 and bpsk so that s of k is just plus or minus 1 so you can easily visualize it what's happening okay so i'm going to multiply the first sync i drew with say s of 0 In the second sync with s of 1 third sync with s of 2 and then add up all of them okay right and then what do i do at the receiver okay what do i do at the receiver i'm doing some correlation and all that but it seems all that complicated but even at the transmitting end one nice thing you can observe okay what is so suppose i call this x of t what is x of 0 s of 0 Okay, do you see that? What is x of one? S of one. What is x of two? S of two. Why did that happen? Okay, because the zero crossings, all of them match. Okay, all of them match for all of the signals, and only at zero, which is a multiple of t, you have something non-zero. So what multiplies that shifted version alone contributes to x of n t. So you can show very easily x of l t equals s of l okay so that's already a nice property that you're seeing okay so even without worrying about orthonormality and all that okay so now what happens when you when you do a correlation at the receiver right you're doing g star of minus t and sampling at t which is the same as correlating with g of t or g of t minus t so on what happens when you correlate 
all the other things in the summation pretty much vanish if your shift was exact okay if your shift is not exact what will happen it will give you a heavy non zero contribution because it uh, decays uh, doesn't decay all that much it will be still low but it will be a little bit not not all that low okay it will be significant okay so everything else goes away and you happily get your s of k back okay so that's the nice thing about this thing so it's good to write down those expressions but it's also important to visualize that these are the actual signals that are going on x of t looks like this it's a sum of sync which is multiplied by plus 1 minus 1 and all that okay so if you actually add it up and it will look almost like this okay this looks very different from the picture we had before when in the previous case when our signaling time was really really large what was the picture it was more like a rectangular pulse this is very much a undulating waveform okay so this also is another way of visualizing the whole thing and understanding that this is this is what's happening okay so anyway this 1 by t dk is a bit of a problem you want to get rid of it you want to reduce that and the one only way one way of nicely reducing that is to signal at a slightly lower symbol rate you decrease t a little bit turns out you can afford to increase that rate of dk if i insist on t equals 1 by w this is the unique signal i can't do anything else so i have to reduce my signaling period signaling rate t to less than 1 by w then hope to change my g of t and hope that it will decrease further okay so that's the next case that we'll consider okay so any comments about this okay so what should be i mean this one question you can ask from okay for several reasons you can ask this question so one of the reasons you might ask this question is i'm adding noise to x of t right my channel is bandwidth is within the bandwidth of x of t x of t is going through okay can i have a receiver where i simply simply sample y of t at multiples of t okay i know already that x of lt is only s of l okay is that a good uh, is that a good receiver to have Sorry. Yeah, zoom. You know, already is. I've already told you I am able to synchronize and all that. So what's the problem with that? What, will Will you come up with any argument against it, or will you say it's it's perfectly fine? So what if I simply sample y of t at Can I do that? Exactly. So noise, we have. It's so. You see, noise is going to have a huge bandwidth, and you're not doing anything to it, and you're directly sampling. So maybe I will low, low pass filter my noise. Okay. So, so noise I say. I'm sorry. Well, but you're sampling, so all kinds of crazy things will happen if you don't cut down the bandwidth. So suppose I say I cut down my bandwidth to a suitable uh, size, and then I sample. can i say this receiver is identical to the previous receiver or do you still see some advantages with the previous receiver okay anyway some, some food for thought think about it okay if you think you have solved the solved the solved this question come and talk to me we'll we'll have a discussion about it. okay so think about if this is a good solution or is the correlation fundamentally important and you have to do it Okay, of course, from a noise point of view, it seems obvious that you have to at least low pass filter. So don't directly sample this. So maybe you low pass filter at minus w by 2, w by 2, and then sample. Okay, so that the noise noise also gets filtered and it's reasonable. And then you sample. Okay, is that a good enough thing? What are the problems? What may or may not be the problems? Okay, something to think about. All right. So the next thing I want to do before we close for today is to look at the case. third case where i let t to be where i let 1 by t to be less than w okay so this is an interesting case and now you can have several possibilities for for signals that will satisfy the nyquist criteria okay so if you choose 1 by t to be less than w okay or if you want you can write t to be greater than 1 by w okay then there are 
many possibilities many choices for g of t okay so one choice which is very popular and is used all the time g of t and i'll say c of t also right so one choice which is very very popular is what's called the raised cosine choice okay so that's the choice which we will study okay so there are several other possibilities by no means it's unique if you let 1 by t to be less than w you can have all kinds of choices but the choice that we'll be studying is a raised cosine c of f okay so this is the choice we'll study one of the properties is that it has is c of t will decay as 1 by t squared now okay and that's convergent and it falls very fast okay so it's, it's very good okay so it's also very very popular okay so if c of f is raised cosine g of f will become what square root of raised cosine so that's the name for g of f corresponding to this square root raised cosine okay so here's the definition i'll do it with a picture first and then write down the expression because the picture is much much easier okay so the choice we make for 1 by t is basically w by 1 plus beta and we let beta be a parameter from 0 to 1 okay so this is some parameter you have to choose it's called the roll off parameter okay beta equals 0 coincides with the old case that we had okay and beta equals 1 is when 1 by t is w by 2 half of the nyquist rate okay so that's the range so we are going to choose my signaling rate to be between w and w by 2 in this fashion w by 1 plus beta okay so that's my choice okay or you can view it as t equals what 1 plus beta by w okay so 1 by w plus beta times 1 by w okay so and then what do i do once i do this i'm i'm going to draw crc of f okay so i'll call it crc okay so that's the raised cosine thing let's get to f okay so 0 i'll draw 1 by t first okay so i'll just draw these points so that we have some scaling and idea of what's going on 1 by t is my shift okay with respect to this shift c of f to, should add up to a constant if you alias with respect to the shift c of f should come up to be a constant okay what's happening is it okay the question okay okay so so the next next point i'll write down is 1 by 2t Minus one by two t. Okay, and the next two points I'll write down will be one plus beta divided by two t and one minus beta divided by two. Okay, all right. Can you see it? I hope you can see it. On two sides of one by two t. i'm marking 1 plus beta by 2t and 1 minus beta by 2t okay so like same thing i'll do on this side also minus 1 minus beta by 2t and then minus 1 plus beta by 2t okay so this is what i do okay between these two guys i'm going to keep it flat at Okay. Okay. All right. And then from here to there there will be a cosine. So what's cosine? Cosine looks like this, no? Can you see it? Okay, no, maybe I'll draw it on the left. Okay, so cosine is going to look like this, right? Right. I'm drawing it a little bit poorly, but you see this. This is zero. This is pi by two. This is 
pi right that's how cosine looks raised cosine is this shifted up okay and i'll only look from 0 to pi okay i'll take that part alone and try to fit it into here raise it and fit it into here okay so let me draw that i'm going to big up make a bit of a mess but hopefully we'll get it right okay. okay so that's the cosine and this side is simply the shifted version oops okay so it's become totally asymmetric but should be symmetric all right so this part this part corresponds to 0 to pi of a raised cosine okay which is this guy okay 0 to pi of the cosine okay so i'll have to scale it suitably to fit there okay so that's my raised cosine response okay so what will happen if i alias first thing is first thing is that when I alias the flat part will fit in nicely and on the cosine part this thing will come and the two of them will add to give me a flat okay so when I alias what will happen something like this will happen and these two cosines will add nicely to give me a uh, constant okay so let me write down precisely what this is I'll write down an expression for it and the expression is what's uh, what's usually important crc of f equals capital t for 0 mod f between 0 and 1 minus beta by 2t and t by 2 okay t by 2 cos squared okay so maybe let me write down 1 plus cos and then we'll write cos squared so that it's cc okay 1 plus cosine okay so the next thing what i'm going to write inside the cosine is just scaling and shifting to squeeze it into that 1 minus 1 minus beta by 2t and 1 plus beta by 2t okay so it will look a little complicated but it's just to squeeze the cosine into that okay so nothing more to it okay pi pi capital t by beta mod f minus 1 minus beta by 2t okay for 1 minus beta by 2t mod f between 1 minus beta by 2t and 1 plus beta by 2t okay and then 0 for mod f greater than 1 plus beta by Okay, so 1 plus beta by 2t equals w by 2. Do you agree? That's how I chose my w, right? I chose my 1 by t to be w by 1 plus beta. Okay, so that works out to w by 2. So this is w by 2. Okay. All right. So this is the raised cosine. So you should, you should know the shape. So it's 1 by t, 1 by 2t. t is 1 plus beta by w. And then 0 to 1 minus beta by t, 2t you choose flat and then you come down in a cosine okay so this is not too crucial to remember that the thing that that you have to look for is c of t and g of t okay so you have to do fourier transform of this how many of you think you can do fourier transform for this and find c of t in 30 seconds what's the answer okay suppose i do a fourier transform what's my c of t how quickly can you find it okay so i won't let you do it i'll give you the answer it's sync t by t multiplied by cos beta pi t by capital t divided by 1 minus 2 beta t by capital t squared okay so this is the c of t and you see it nicely decays as 1 by t squared okay which is what i wanted okay so now i have to go to g of f and then go to g of t okay so now what how do i go to g of f i have to take square root for the first part it's just root t it's okay for the second part how can i easily take square root yeah you write it as 2 cos squared that by 2 and then you take square root you'll get a cosine okay and then from that expression you can do a inverse Fourier transform also very easily okay it is just that multiplied by several functions very easy to do the inverse well not very easy 
you have to work on it you can eventually get there at least conceptually there is nothing more to it okay so if you do that the square root raised cosine pulse okay cosine pulse K works out to be g of t equals I'll simply write it down just for telling you what it is a lot of books have this so it's quite standard 1 plus alpha pi t by capital T plus t times sine 1 minus alpha pi t by capital T divided by 4 alpha t whole thing divided by 1 minus k so I suddenly shifted to alpha I don't know why okay so all the alphas are betas okay sorry for that one minus four beta t by capital T square okay so that's your square root raised cosine uh, pulse okay okay so the first thing to test is what happens when beta equals 0 okay so you should convince yourself that when beta equals 0 this becomes the sink okay it should become the sink if it doesn't become the sink then something is wrong okay so that's it's not too not too difficult one can show it okay, without too much of a difficulty we will get that okay so what happened should divide okay so this is what I copied down from a book I think I might have made a mistake so anyway I'll check on this we'll meet uh, on Monday and we'll discuss